for the last presentation, but the most complicated one. <laughs> uh, yeah, we have the goose transition. So uh, now I will talk about chemical fingerprint concept uh, applied for food contact material, especially for recycling material. Uh, the question just before is how we can distinguish two or two kind of recycling materials, and we and this represents all the result and on the on the result and the slide is are based on the result of the thesis of Julien Camorvan. Um, he defended last year already in our in our lab. So just to pose some some problems. So we have many kind of materials. The virgin one decontaminated plus plus or more because we have the two different colors. Just hot wash it. So uh, if we can or not recognize the virgin and um, etc. So well, Olivia already showed us uh, some uh, this morning. So here we just took one to compare virgin and recycling PP polypropylene. And so, OK, it's quite easy to, to recognize because the chromatogram truly a chromatogram is more sparse in the PP, virgin PP than the recycling PP. We have many cross contamination misuse, etc. And break, also break down, break down products. But if we have two recycling materials, so here is the chromatogram obtained by GCMS, GC gas chromatography, uh, coupled with um, spectrometry the mass. This one is the post consumer of food origin, so the uh, PET food origin, and here is a mixed uh, origin. So the two PET are non decontaminated, just wash it. And as a first sign, I'm not sure that we can see any difference. Maybe in maybe here, but we don't know. So the, the question is if we have the robust methods and fast uh, and rapid method to, to say that, okay, this one is uh food origin or not to go in the recycling loop and also you have already seen this uh, this slide it's to uh just to show you the int int intensification of risk if we use recycling material so with it we need to deal and we have the big challenge that uh how we can orient the stream or the material flows for the good applications to in, but, uh, for in, uh, to ensure the, the safety. So is, is this one is good for food contact, for cosmetic contact, etc. We can add some functional barriers. It depends on the type of food, the process, the shelf life, indirect or in direct or indirect contact. So all of this, we need to. We have many many questions. So here we propose the the method one methodology combining analytical techniques so just the routine one low resolution gcms not something really high tech coupling with um information theory to treat to treat the, the chromatogram data and we have some kind of um uh, compar uh, compar uh, comparison of spectrum comparison Uh, so the first step, we need to extract chemical information. So we have the, uh, the sample, plastic sample, uh, carbon sample. We make the, ex the total extraction by uh, using the strong uh, solvent, dichloromethane here. We will evaporate to get the better uh, resolution, to get better concentrations. We add some internal standards and we launch uh, um, GCMS analysis with real simple program. So here, for example, we have the raw GCMS signal with column bleeding, the noise. So it's really, it's not something really nice. But uh, we see often this guy of um, of GC uh, of chromatogram uh, when we use low resolution GCMS. The first step we uh, we we apply is we transform the signal in symmetric uh, using a um, wavelet transform. With this step, we remove the baseline. We we um, we make them more uh, resol resolutive. Resolutive. We can co um, did, um, isolate the peak uh, correlated peak. We can also detect the, the um, systematic signal of the detectors, and we tag and old code the the signal um, uh, with thick lasers. So we have the strong compressions, and we have some some signal invariable with the um, detectors and apparatus. The second 
um, the second step consists on the comparing chemical informations. So here, from chromatogram, we have the sequence of letters because we transform all the peak to the to the letters. So here we have six letters. For example, here I I take one uh, one example for conservative and considerate, and we the the, the how to say the objective is obtain the common sequence like uh, called mutual informations um, by adding the gap. So the gap is a, the, the gap to mass to maximize the common the, the common sequences. So here, for example, we we add some gap for ID with some gap of V, and we have the common sequences it concentrate. And the distance is the inverse of this one. So the the the, the distance is um is accept of information theory. So for each sequence or for each chromatogram, we can calculate the distance uh, for two chromatogram, and we can also compare uh, between them. So here it's just a summary of the, the, of the methodology. We have the chromatogram. We make some cleaning the chromatogram by uh, wavelet transform, uh, encodage, uh, encodage, encodage, alignment, etc. And here to just to show you some case study when using um, chemical fingerprint concept. For the first one, we follow the processing effect on PP, PP poly, polypropylene samples. So here we have 23 samples, seven grade. So uh, here seven, uh, this one is a, 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 a priori graph, seven grade. We can have different processor temperatures. Um, we can have also different form, pellet or processing, so pellet or trade. Uh, we can add also some colored black uh, with down with the colorant black and white, and also we can add some label uh, label. So we have 23 uh, 23 um, samples. And the question is if we can't or not uh, rank sample according to the effect. Uh, if we have a see the difference between grad, uh, different uh, processing temperatures, colorate, etc. So here we I we project the distance between 23 uh, chromatogram in the dimension one and four, for example, and we can see that we have three groups according to the grade of materials, not seven but only three. Uh, on the green uh, flow of uh, Row the green row we see the effect of the um, uh, mise en forme the processing pellet or article the train here so we have the we see clearly the effect and here you can see the is a blue row the effect of if we add or not the colorant and the label but we don't see so much uh, we don't see so much difference difference maybe our our um, GCMS is not a good uh, high uh, enough resolution, but uh, with um, with our methodology and with our GCMS, uh, we don't have the, we don't see the, the effect. And this one is uh, a little um, interesting for the we would like to rank or to compare the PET with the unknown PET among all the things. So we have here two uh, commercial recycling uh, food grade uh, PET. So um decontaminated at uh, with a uh, um standard here we have five uh post consumer uh, rpt with mixed origin so um, with mix uh, mix origin without decontaminated sorry and here we have five orders wash post consumer pet with food origin and um is the same thing. We we project the distance between different chromatograms, and here we you, we have a note uh, a note um, uh, sample, and we need to know if a note sample is close of um, what is a um, close group of some of sample. So here we can see clearly we have three groups. According uh, this one is a food grade recycling and decontaminated. This one and this one is no decontaminated. Um, the non decontaminated uh, PT for uh, with different uh, origins, and here you have a, uh, a no, maybe closer to the food grade, uh, the food grade uh, materials. In the, at this stage, we cannot say that we don't have the minimum assumption. No, uh, it's only distant, relative distance. 
and for the last uh, case study, it all in all the in all the projects we have the uh, um, uh, now the uh, one national project on the um, uh, recycled paper board, and we try to use the same theory to how to say to highlight the mass transfer between packaging and the and the food. So normally, what we expect that we have the we have the, the information of packaging, we have the information of food, and maybe the mutual information correspond to the contaminant or to, to, to the mass transfers of migrations. And here we use, we try, we make some, the, uh, the test on four uh, dried, uh, dry food, cereal, flour, pasta, and rice. We make, we have two, um, two condition of contact, T0, and when we buy it, uh, when we bought the food, uh, the food products, and after after the migrations, accelerate migration at uh, 60 degrees Celsius for after 20 20 days, and normally we have the the packaging component responsible for the food contamination are located close to the food content. So here, for example, we have the carbon of cereal is close to the cereal food uh, the, the food constituents. So we expect that uh, the main contribution of the contamination of food it goes by carbon is the same same thing of the with the pasta we have the food next to the to the carbon uh, signal etc and now just rapidly we have the you know efficient encoded low, low resolution gcms spectra uh, we have also the routine comparison of a no sample and uh, now the next step we need to uh, we we will have many um a PhD thesis and postdoc to to how to to go further with this uh, with this methodology. We need to make them independent of the apparatus because now all the all data is obtained by one uh, uh, one GCMS at the LNE lab. So we need we we know that we have the factors if we change the, the apparate, apparatus and also we need to collect. Many many samples. We need to collect many fingerprint, chemical fingerprint of all type of uh, materials, and we will have, I hope, some national project to in next year to uh, to to help her to collect the materials to collect also the chemical signal by different uh, different um, uh, technique. Here you, we use GCMS. We hope that we will have the Raman, NMR, and etc. Many many of uh, others. Or the technique. So that's all for today.